Hi Year 10, this is Mrs Chaplin and today we're going to look at Macbeth which you're studying for Literature Paper 1. We're going to focus on the character of Lady Macbeth. For today's lesson you'll need a pen and a piece of paper and you'll need the extracts that I'm going to refer to which are in your Year 10 workbook. If you haven't got the extracts, when they appear on my PowerPoint you'll be able to take a screenshot with your phone so that you can refer to them. To begin with, I'd like you to start writing down the learning objective, which is to analyse how Lady Macbeth's character changes throughout the play. Whilst you write that, I'll go through what we're going to learn this lesson. So hopefully we're going to know how Lady Macbeth's character changes during the play. We're going to be able to understand how Shakespeare shows his audience this change through the devices he uses. We're going to analyse why her character changes and how a Jacobean audience may have responded. And towards the end of this PowerPoint, I'm going to give you an opportunity to practice writing your own analysis of her character. OK, so to begin with, I'd like you to recap what you'd know about Lady Macbeth's character by answering true or false to the following statements. And I'm going to give you one minute, 60 seconds to do that. OK, so I'm going to go through the answers now. Um, number one, true or false, that she is with Macbeth when he meets the witches. False. Number two, that she's the first person Macbeth tells about the witches' predictions. That is true. Banquo is there when the predictions happen, so he does hear. But Lady Macbeth is the first person that Macbeth wants to tell. She plans King, King Duncan's murder, that is true also. If you remember, it's her that makes all the plan and it's her that persuades Macbeth to follow her plan. She commits King Duncan's murder is false. It's Macbeth that murders King Duncan. She carries the daggers back to place on Duncan's guard, that is true. That is part of the plan that was essential for blaming the guards to try and make out to everybody else that they had murdered King Duncan and Macbeth confides in her about his plans to murder Banquo and Macduff's family. That's false. If you remember, he doesn't tell her anything. And that's one of the things that signifies throughout the play how their relationship has changed. OK, so you're going to focus now on the extract from Act one scene five. Um, if you want to take a screenshot of this, please do. There is also a clip that I've um, included, as you can see, on YouTube. You could watch the, the extract being performed by a professional actress. And this is how Lady Macbeth reacts to the news in Macbeth's letter. OK, so... Summarising what's just happened there then, um, this is all for you. Lady Macbeth seems really excited by Macbeth's news, but she's still really worried that he hasn't got the right personality to act on the witch's news. She thinks that he might be too kind. She knows he wants to be king and that he's got the ambition, but she fears that he's not going to take the quickest way, which, by the way, would be killing Duncan. She prays to dark spirits to fill her so that she can become more powerful and persuasive to help Macbeth achieve the witch's predictions and become the King of Scotland. 
this makes her seem as though she is the more dominant character in the marriage and the more decisive one. It makes her seem ruthless because she is prepared to kill a king. You will remember from doing your lessons at school that it, it is a crime against God, it's a sin against God, a cardinal sin, to kill the king, to commit regicide. So for her to even contemplate doing that, that, that shows that she is really ruthless, possibly even evil. Um, all of these things could suggest that she's more masculine than Macbeth, maybe a little bit more ambitious, which of course are key themes within the play. She also uses words that make her sound as though she's similar to the witches, um, by sort of praying to the dark spirits um, and wanting that power. What, what I'd like you to do now then is to have a look at the extract and to try and find the, some of the devices that I've written down um, that helps you understand how Shakespeare shows the audience what her character is like. So I'd like you to have a look to see if you can find me an imperative, an order that makes her seem determined. See if you can find a metaphor to suggest that Macbeth is too kind. If you can find any imagery that she uses to suggest she can persuade Macbeth to do anything. Any imagery that she uses to suggest that Macbeth does want the power of kingship and any language that she uses or imagery that she uses that links her with the witches and with their power over Macbeth. Okay, if you take five minutes to do this task, please, you can either write on the extract if you've got the workbook in front of you or write down the quotation marks in your book. I'd write down um, the points that I've got on the PowerPoint as well so that when you're revising you can remember what the quotations are showing about Lady Macbeth's character. Okay, so I've written down the quotations that I would have chosen for similar things. Um, an imperative is an order and, and she promises she orders Macbeth that you will be what you're promised you will be king she uses metaphors to suggest that he is too kind too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way to kill Duncan she uses imagery to suggest that she can persuade Macbeth she's going to chastise that means tell off with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee all that stops you so she's going to make sure that she gets rid of any doubts that he has to, that he might have that he can do this that he can become the king she uses the imagery of the golden round to, to um to reference the crown and the power of the crown and that um, what that will mean to macbeth and herself and she uses imagery that links her with the witches and their power over macbeth that i might may pour my spirits She's referring there to persuading him to kill the king, but obviously the image of spirits makes it seem as though she's linked with the witches. Okay, so we're going to move on now to how the Jacobean audience would have responded to her characters. This is a really important part of your answer in your exam because you need to refer to how the audience would have um responded to the characters and to the themes that Shakespeare presents. You will have noticed in the previous slides that I keep on using the term this makes her seem. That's also a really good phrase to use to make sure that you start getting the grade five answers because you've shown the examiner that you're aware that the Shakespeare is, is doing things on purpose, he's manipulating his audiences he's making us respond how he wants us to respond to the characters okay so for this um task then i'd like you to use the keywords that are at the bottom of the page um and to slot those in as and where you think that they would make sense to show us how a jacobean audience would respond it would make sense here to copy out the whole paragraph and to add the words because it will aid your revision and your notes when you come 
to look back at this um, next term. So we're just going to go through the answers then and, and you'll mark your own. So the Jacobean audience then wouldn't have found Lady Macbeth a sympathetic character because she seems determined, ambitious and ruthless. She seems to have power over her husband and all of these characteristics were not deemed feminine at the time the play was performed. So they wouldn't have liked her. The audience might even have felt sympathy for Macbeth because he's manipulated by the witches and his wife. You could link that in later lessons, we'll look at his own free will and whether it, he has any choice in his actions. Um, Shakespeare makes Lady Macbeth seem evil and she would have reminded the audiences of the witches, so they would not have found her sympathetic. Okay, so we we need to move on now to how her character changes throughout the play. So we, we've outlined what she was like at the start of the play, that she was ruthless and ambitious and in control, and she seems to have power over Macbeth. Throughout the course of the play, then, their relationship is shown as changing. If you remember, he plans the murder of Banquo without consulting Lady Macbeth. He plans the murder of late of Macduff's family without consulting Lady Macbeth. He goes back to the witches to consult with them um, rather than trusting Lady Macbeth with his worries and his fears. If you haven't got your workbook with you, take a screenshot of, of this um, extract also because you'll be referring to this in the next slide. Um, and you can also see that there's another clip um, from YouTube if you wanted to watch this scene being performed by Lady Macbeth. Okay, so at the start of the play then, as we've already said, Lady Macbeth seems excited, she's in control of Macbeth, she seems ambitious, powerful, ruthless, in lots of ways to a Jacobean audience, all of those things would make her seem more masculine than her husband, and in lots of ways she resembles the witches. By the end of the play though, from the extract that we've just seen, Lady Macbeth is sleepwalking, she's hallucinating, she's upset by the blood that she got on her hands, she's imagining that she can't get this blood stain off. Um, if you remember, she took the, the daggers back because um, Macbeth left with the daggers and that was part of their plan that they wanted to frame Duncan's guards for the murder. She's really upset that Lady Macduff, the Thane of Fife's wife and her children have been murdered. 
and Shakespeare makes it seem as though she's changed a lot. She's now feeling guilty at the start of the play. She showed no remorse for planning to kill the king, but now she is feeling guilty. She's no longer in control of Macbeth. He's going back to the witches. He's planning more murders. He's out of control. And in some ways, this might make her seem more feminine to Shakespeare's audience. And in some ways, you might think it makes her seem more sympathetic. That last point is really up to you, whether you agree or disagree. When you're writing your answers in your exam, you can suggest alternative interpretations, like some people might make them um, think that she becomes more sympathetic, and that gives you more marks than the examiner because you are beginning to discuss alternative interpretations. Okay, so I would like you to do the same as we did before, really, to try and find quotations that prove, that support, um, that Shakespeare uses these devices to show the audience what her character is like and how she's changed. All right, so again, just take three to five minutes, maybe write down the points that I've made here, and then find your quotations. Pause the PowerPoint for three to five minutes. And here we have the quotations that you, you could have used. Um, Lady Macbeth uses imperatives this time to make her seem obsessed with the blood. She's, she's commanding the blood to leave her, the stain from her hands, out damned spot. She uses rhetorical questions to show that she feels guilty. She remembers that Duncan had a lots of blood in him. And this is something that haunts her. Remember, she's saying this in front of other people as well, so it really is condemning her and, and Macbeth. People now know that they are responsible for Duncan's murder. She uses interrogative questions to show she didn't know about the plans that Macbeth had for Lady Macduff. The Thane of Fife is Macduff, and she wonders where his wife is now. She knows that she has been murdered with her children. Um, she uses imagery to suggest that she can never be forgiven. Will these hands never be clean? That could relate to this theme of the cardinal sin of regicide, of this act against God, that once you've done that, you cannot be forgiven. We know also in um, Shakespeare's era that people believed in hell. So maybe she feels here that she is destined to go to hell because of her part in Duncan's murder. Okay, so just to summarise then, I just would like you to complete the chart to summarise how Lady Macbeth's character ch changes from the start to the beginning of the play using these adjectives. Just pause the PowerPoint again for another two, three minutes and sort the adjectives into those that describe her at the beginning and those that describe her at the end. Okay, your turn, and these are the answers that you should have got. I've put a question mark next to sympathetic because that is a personal response. You may think she deserves the end that she gets. You may think that she be it, that makes her more sympathetic. Okay, and if you then would like to spend some time practicing and um, putting all the ideas that we've discussed this lesson into an exam answer, this is what the exam question would look like. It will ask you to focus on an extract, so I've chosen the one that we looked at at the start of the play, and then it will give you a statement um, to discuss. So this statement is explore how far Shakespeare presents Lady Macbeth as an unsympathetic character. So you'll start with the extract from the start of the lesson and you will try and find between three and five ideas within that extract to form your argument about whether you think she's a sympathetic character in that extract. You then need to move on to the second bullet point and you need to refer to at least I would say two other moments in the play where she is either sympathetic or unsympathetic and whether that backs up your argument 
or whether you think that Shakespeare is, is showing her in a different light there, whether she's changed at all. And hopefully what we did in the second part of the PowerPoint will help you with that. If you want feedback on any of these practice questions, if you send them into your English teacher on the email for the English address, then you can get some feedback on it. Thanks for your time. Bye.